Hello and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Jenny and I work in the reputation and brand management department of Fanshawe College. I'll be your host for today's session. Today we are joined by Susan Clements and Jocelyn Prosser who will be speaking about the gerontology interprofessional practice program at Fanshawe College. Hi Susan, hi Jocelyn, thank you for being here. Hi. Hi everyone. Can you just help me out by moving to the next slide please. There we go. Before we begin today's session, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. Audience webcams and mics are turned off for this session, so don't worry, no one can see or hear you at all. If you have any questions throughout the session, it's really easy to send them in by using the questions feature. To access the questions feature, just click on the question mark and type away. I will gather your submitted questions during the presentation to ask in our live Q&A. We'll try our best to get through all of your submitted questions within the session time. If you are looking for more information after the session, we'll provide you with contact information and how to book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. Lastly, if you happen to have multiple programs open and running, it may compromise your webinar experience. We recommend you take a moment now to close any open programs before we begin. Now, once again, I would like to introduce Susan and Jocelyn, who will be speaking on the Gerontology Interprofessional Practice Program at Fanshawe College. I will be back again for the live Q&A, and now I'm gonna pass it over to Susan and Jocelyn. Hi, welcome everybody. We're really excited to be here. Um, I'm Susan, but I'm going to hand it over to Jocelyn to talk a little bit about uh, the first part of the overview of our program. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. Just want to set it to our next slide. <laughs> Is that working? No, not yet. Can you see now? No, reshare the screen. <laughs> Sorry, guys, thank you for your patience. Now? Perfect. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So, as Jenny mentioned, we are the Gerontology and Interprofessional Practice graduate certificate program and since that is a really really long title we're going to call it GIP from now on. I hope you guys can follow along. So we are a one-year graduate certificate program and our faculty have very specific training and experience in working with the aging population and so they bring tons of real life uh, experiences and situations and scenarios into the classroom for our students to learn from. As mentioned, it is a graduate certificate program, which means that our admission requirements are a little bit different. You must come with a degree or a diploma in a related field um, already before you can get into the program. So some Previous diplomas or degrees that you might have include nursing, health science, occupational therapy, social work, physiotherapy, or you may have a diploma in developmental service worker, um, personal support worker, social service worker, recreation and leisure. I think the list can go on and on. And so if you're feeling like, oh, I don't fit into any of these that are listed here, you are always welcome to send an email and we'd be happy to clarify whether your degree or diploma meets the requirements to get into this course. We bring in about 40 students per intake. And so intake means that we bring in a new set of students into level one, both in September and then again in January, and each of those intakes is about 40 students in size. So in terms of, sorry, Jocelyn, I'm just gonna jump right in here because I'm so excited. So I'm Susan, I'm one of the professors um, that Jocelyn talked about. My background happens to be in physiotherapy, but some of our other faculty um, professors have their degrees in thanatology our social workers um, with vast experience in the geriatric field. In fact, um, with one of our professors, I was able to work right in the field with her on a geriatric team, an outreach team. So um, we had therapeutic recreation specialist as well on the team. So really proud um, to be able to say the varied kind of backgrounds that we do have. 
In terms of what is this program, this fabulous GIP program, well, what does it do? It's going to augment the already great skills that you bring. So in this program, as Jocelyn had said, we have students coming from various backgrounds, right? From anywhere from DSW to PTs to OTs. And what you're going to get from this program is building on your already valuable skill set. So you come into the program with a great skill set, and now you're going to have enhanced skills in taking care of and being part of that interprofessional team who will have that expertise in the care of older adults and families. You're also going to have that great experience of working with an interprofessional context. So not only with all of the different students that you have around you here at the table in the GIP program, we've got the ability through field placement and other experiences, we're going to be working with community partners, right? So not only is it, you know, building your skills to work with those older adults, but we know that healthcare now in the healthcare field in general, we need to be working as an interprofessional team to provide that best practice care for our older adults. The program also um, affords opportunity to work with live kind of live actors. So we call these lab simulations. So we have clinical scenarios that you would be working with um, actors who play the part wonderfully in terms of an older adult. And you'll have different clinical scenarios working on your communication skills, working on your assessment skills, building therapeutic um, rapport, those sorts of things. So very transferable skills for you for out in the field for later. And as we mentioned, there's field placement that's attached to our program in level two. So in the second semester, after you've kind of gotten all of your introductory courses under your belt, we like to call it transforming or translating theory to practice. And that really comes out in your field placement opportunity. During the pandemic, um, we are offering those virtual placements. As you can imagine, our, we have the honor and privilege of working with older adults, but right now that's a very vulnerable population, not able to have those face-to-face -face placements now, um, but we are really looking forward to the future again of being able to resume those field placements. As it stands now though, I can tell you the students who are working in the virtual field placements right now, um, they're loving the experience because they're getting to work more closely with something called faculty liaisons who um, through case study approach, they're getting a really good experience that way and still doing their capstone projects with our community uh, partnering organizations out there as well. So as mentioned, there's the two semesters. Semester one really focuses in on those introductory types of courses. You're gonna see the vast array there on the slide. Everything from therapeutic recreation and leisure, you get your introduction to research because this is a very research-based type of program. One of our signature experiences, we would say is the capstone project or a research project that we do with our partnering organizations. Um, so we have an introduction to research there. Person, family, community centered practice, looking at the person. Um, uh, personhood is a very important practice for us, as well as community practice. So learning about all of those different organizations as well, um, supporting that older adult. The aging population that has a lab component to it, mental health and gerontology, interprofessional practice, and thanatology, which is, if you're not familiar, is more of the end of life care. Our semester two now is building um, that real practical component. So again, it's translating that theory into action. Um, the big thing is the field placement, and it is very intimately tied with a couple of the other courses in level two, being the research literacy or your capstone project, as well as the field seminar. There are other courses, of course, that are um, found in level two, inclusive practice and observation documentation and assessment. Oh, as well as a communication course, as you can see, is there also to augment and support the work that you're doing in your capstone project.
So in terms of the certificate and the expectations, it is an expectation that you maintain a 2.0 grade point average, um, knowing that this is a post-grad certificate. Also, as I have mentioned, it's really, this program is really um, foundational in terms of research and evidence-based practice. And so right from the get-go in your intro to research, the expectation is that you do have some skills that you bring with you in terms of your writing. And if you've got some background in research that really you know, um, will assist you, it's not mandatory, but you do have to have a love of research and wanting to be eager um, to work on some of those research skills. So those skills, the research literacy type skills are going to be being able to take a look at evidence that would influence your practice, be able to synthesize that information, appraise it, and critically apply it as well as use um, kind of academic, uh, you know, academic writing skills as well. We use APA referencing, and so all of your academic work will follow the APA formatting as well as the referencing. So you would need to be very familiar with that as well to maintain academic integrity. So what comes after this program? Lots and lots of opportunity, I've got to say. So our employment settings, as you can see, is varied. Lots in the retirement and long-term care sector. I must say that, oops, with our field placement opportunities, um, you will not have direct patient care in your field placement opportunities. The emphasis is much more on communication strategies and working with the interprofessional team building those skills in terms of um, recreation, leisure, communication, engagement, program development, that sort of thing, but not necessarily direct hands-on medical care or patient care in that respect. So in the, in the retirement and long-term care residency, it might be a lot more with around um, activity, activation, um, and therapeutic recreation. There are opportunities in group homes, home support services. Um, I've had some fitness instructors kind of go on in that end of things. And because of the opportunities that we have with research, I've had several students go on and pursue actual uh, careers in research. Two of them right now have um, jobs in the research industry. But what we also find is not only landing those jobs kind of practically in working with the older adult in those various sectors, we do see the students wanting to further their education. And so whether that is, you know, looking a little bit further in, I really love therapeutic recreation, I'm going to go on and get my diploma now in therapeutic recreation or developmental service worker, you know, really love working with older adults, but now I'm gonna hone my skills in to an even more specific discipline, right? Um, some of our nurses go on to critical care nursing and even into geriatric uh, medicine. Um, we've had several of our students now aspire for their master's degree. So we know that occupational therapy and even there's master's in social work, um, and uh, being successful that way and being kind of a lifelong learner. But we feel as though the GIP program sometimes really helps people understand where their passion really lies and off they go and further their education. I've then been told by other alumni that having that um, capstone project and doing the research really help them be able to, you know, land their applications for their master's degrees if that's something that they want to pursue. And we'll turn that back over to Jocelyn with some additional notes. Awesome, thank you. So this program is considered full time and therefore our students who are Canadian residents are eligible for OSAC, uh, which is a financial aid. And another note that we, we often get questions, when can I start applying? And the process in college is a little bit different. So you can start sending in your uh, requests for the program, your uh, you'd like to be admitted to the program. And then as of February 1st, 
we start to send out admissions on a first come first serve basis to students. So the earlier you apply to the program, this, uh, the sooner your application goes in and your admission would come out. And um, then the program stays open until it is full. Once it's full, then it becomes closed. And then there's some contact information here. It is my contact information. I'm typically able to support with those logistical questions and you are welcome to send me an email. That's the best way to reach me, especially during COVID times. Thank you to Susan and to Jocelyn. That was a wonderful overview that has led to some excellent questions for this Q&A portion. Just a reminder to our attendees, if you'd like to ask a question, please submit it, submit it with the questions feature. To open the questions feature, click on the question mark. We have a number of questions in the queue already, and we'll try our best to get through all of your submitted questions within the session time. If you have any questions after the session, we recommend you email myfuture at fanshawc.ca or book an appointment with one of our Fanshaw College recruiters. Okie doke, let's start with our first question. How long is the GIP program? I can take this one, Susan. So our GIP program is an eight month program. You can start in September and end in April, or you can start in January and you can end in August. So it's eight months long, fast in and out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and what do I need to get into the program? Right, so some kind of degree right or a diploma preferably in the human services industry um, will set you very well aligned for the program well and you have to have a love for wanting to work with the older adults and the interprofessional team members too but that always helps mm -hmm. um, can i take this program part-time that's a good that's a good question so this program is currently only offered full-time uh, it is not offered part-time at the moment and um, I think that answers the question just full-time so far. <laughs> what kind of you jobs? You never know I guess I in the future. Oh sorry. No, that's okay. I'm gonna say you what never kind of know in the future but not right now. Yes. What kind of jobs will I have leaving the program? So you know for one thing that I, I do just want to reiterate is that you kind of come out of this program not a gerontologist right by any stretch of the imagination to be a gerontologist I still need about 10 more years of experience right and <laughs> training under my belt but what you do come out with is kind of enhanced experience skills in dealing with the older adults and so you already bring that expertise from your field, if you've come from DSW, if you've come from therapeutic recreation, physio, et cetera. You've just made yourself more marketable in that particular field, right? So if you are competing with others in that same field, but you both want that job in the retirement sector and you have this de uh, degree behind you, then you have got the edge um, of being able to get that job. You did see from the other slides that there still are jobs that our graduates land right after the program, a lot more kind of in retirement and long-term care sector, lots of times helping out with that ther therapeutic recreation and programming aspect um, and the social kind of engagement. Um, and we have seen in the social service worker um, support sector as well in group homes um, and that sort of thing as well. Very good, thank you. Um, one last question here it looks like. Um, what is the course load like? That's a good question too, yes that's a good one. So typically you're in around 21 to 25 hours a class of class a week and for every hour of class we do expect about two hours of work at home so you are committing to about a 75 hour a week commitment it's like a full-time job uh, full-time school is a full-time job so 
Um, we find that students are most successful when they're able to dedicate their time and energy to school because it is quite heavy in the, the coursework and, and the expectations of the students. That isn't to say people haven't been able to manage a part-time job and full-time studies, but it would require that you've got a really strict schedule and you're dedicating time to your schoolwork as well as your work at home or your work out in the community so that nothing falls off your plate. That's wonderful, thank you. Actually, we do have time for one more question and I have another one here. Um, do I have to have an RN license first? No, so we do have a lot of international students that come to our program and they're aspiring to get their RN licenses here in Canada. And so no, by all means, you can have a background, you might have an RN license, um, you know, in other parts of, you know, a different country, um, but you come here and you wouldn't have that, that same kind of delegation. Um, but at the same time, you can just be studying kind of nursing background. You wouldn't have to be a fully licensed uh, practical or registered nurse in order to come into the program either. That's great. Maybe if we could just add to that, because I know it might come up as a, as a question. Um, this program doesn't have any credits towards a Canadian nursing uh, designation. And so it's not like you could use some of the courses you have from GIP towards your Canadian Nursing Association uh, registration. So just so you note that, it is just about enhancing your skills and your ability to work with the older adult. Just to kind of qualify that even further, just to make it, you know, kind of crystal clear, a lot of the times it helps if we say, you know, think about the backgrounds of other students that come to the program. So if we have, you know, a social worker that comes to this program, we wouldn't be able to say that at the end of it, that social worker would be able to have nursing type skills, right? So they wouldn't have to be, they wouldn't have those credentials um, towards a nursing degree. So it's, that's a really good point. It's going to augment your nursing skills, but it can't be used as credit towards it. Perfect. Thank you very much. We have now reached the end of our session today and would like to thank Susan and Jocelyn for their time. Also, thank you all to who attended and submitted questions today. We hope that all of your questions were answered in regards to gerontology and interprofessional practice. If you can think of any more questions, please connect with our Fanshawe College recruitment team by email at myfuture@fanshawec.ca or by booking a one-on-one -on -one appointment with them at fanshawec.ca slash connect. Don't forget to watch your email as we'll be sending you some details about our open house activity this Saturday and enjoy the rest of open house. Thank you.